coming to you, well, not live, but recorded, <laughs> and not from Memphis, actually, but South Haven, Mississippi. It is Derek Young and Matt Hall. It is the KSO Show brought to you by People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. We've also got Logan Mance, who will join the show later for predictions. Grant Flanders help running the pod. D.Y., first things first, man. People who have been listening know this. It's been a rough couple days for you from a variety of perspectives, if you want to be honest. How are you right now? I am shattered but not broken. D.Y. got after it on Beale Street two nights ago. As a lot of you know, Derek's from Ohio, Ohio State fan. The Buckeyes fall in the semifinal. And then I had to break his heart and say, you also, did you know the basketball team got blown up or lost to West Virginia? He did not know that. So um, not a great few days. No, but, you know, still got the Cats. Exactly. Yeah, Cats tomorrow or today, depending on when you're listening to this, the Liberty Bowl, excuse me, the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, they've politely, and I'm being sincere, it was polite, so I want to honor their wishes it is the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, not just the Liberty Bowl. We're talking about it, K-State versus Navy. I told you enough about DY's problems. We're going to talk football now. I want to just go uh, very, very analytical, very serious here, DY. Uh, I'm kind of serious, at least. But talk through each portion of the game. I'm going to tell you what we're going to talk about, rattle off some stats to you, and then let you just react to those numbers, react to that part of the game, share me your thoughts, and I'll move to the next one. I want to talk first about the one everyone's going to be interested in, which is probably Navy's rushing offense against K-State's rush defense. Here's the numbers I've got for you. Navy's PFF grades. They are an 86.6 rushing the football and 80.0 in run blocking. K-State's rush defense is a 72.0, and their tackling is a 41.0. Again, PFF numbers, I say it every time I say it, grain of salt, not apples to apples. They didn't play the same schedule, all those things that the numbers are. Here's just, you know, generic stats, yards per game. Navy number one in the nation, 363.7 yards per game running the football. K-State 61st in the nation, giving up 152.3 yards a game. Navy averages 6.07 yards a carry. I put this in the store to give it some point of reference. Oklahoma averages 6.08, so it's the same thing. So those are the numbers. Again, not apples to apples. And we haven't talked about how unique Navy's rushing offense is. So, D.Y., just talk through this matchup with me. What does K-State have to do in this? And what do you think of all those numbers I just threw at you? Yeah, of course they have to sell out against the run. Every every team does when they play one of these uh, service academies, whether it be Army, Navy, or Air Force. Um, some good things to kind of think about. I know it's com- two completely different schemes, but the last time Kansas State played, Iowa State knew they probably couldn't throw the ball because yep. of uh, the weather and, and the wind uh, at, in Manhattan for that contest. But they shut down Brees Hall in the Iowa State running game. So their last game, they really shut down a running game, and that's what they're going to be tasked to do uh, in the Liberty Bowl against Navy. And another good thing I would say is Chris Kleiman uh, said on – today's Monday, so Monday right. uh, afternoon – that no call that they've made on defense this year will apply to this game. There'll be completely different calls because the offense they're facing is that much different. So, But the good part about that is you had three weeks to prepare for. So something that you have to play completely different defense for, they didn't have to you know install that in four or five days. They had multiple weeks. But Navy is really good. It's going to be a challenge. One thing too that I also think is something to be careful of and not have – you know, the wrong perception is Navy does have a high number of yards per carry. Right. But a lot of that's because they're actually, for a service academy, pretty explosive. They actually have a lot of runs where they're not, they're not going two, three yards in a cloud of dust per se. They're going for big plays. No doubt about it. We, we say triple option one. That's not even really the correct terminology. If you listen to how KSU fan talks about it in the preview prediction that comes out, Tuesday morning, depending on when you're listening to this or anything you share on the site. It's not as simple as they don't get in the old school wishbone and run about a triple option. They do a lot of different things. Um, and then just good athletes, too, of course, with Malcolm Perry. That'll transition us maybe to the passing game. We can stay with running game if you have other thoughts to share with it. But this is Navy's passing game now against K-State's passing defense. PFF grades, Navy is 62.5 throwing the football. A 71.3 catching the football and a 47.1 pass blocking. So that's their worst score anywhere is their pass blocking grade at a 47.1. Opposing grades for K-State pass rush, 75.2. So again, if you're looking for something that's a 75.2 pass rush against a 47.1 pass block, if you get that opportunity to play that battle very often, it's a big advantage for K-State. Coverage, K-State is 63.5, not an incredibly strong grade. Some yards per game, Navy, 95.0 yards per game passing. That is 128th in the country. K-State gives up 211.7, 211.7 yards per game. That's 45th in the country. So yards per game, K-State's way better. A note I did put in here, while Navy is 128th in total passing yardage, they're number eight in the nation in passing efficiency. So when they throw it, they're as efficient as anybody in the country, but they might not throw it 
five, six, seven times tomorrow in the Liberty Bowl. Yeah, they didn't throw it once the against Army. Liberty Bowl. Sorry. <laughs> they didn't throw it once against Army. They called eight passing plays, but didn't throw it one of those eight plays. That was more Malcolm Perry just taking the ball and running with it. But we talked about the pass blocking for Navy not being good. That's mostly because when they go back to pass, the other team's guessing run has 9-10 right. in the box, so it's pretty hard to protect against. And the reason that they do have some success passing ball when they get rid of the ball is because they're catching everyone by surprise. You do have to guess run. So when they do throw it, you're probably going to be pretty surprised. And, and if you're not disciplined, you're going to be out of position. So it's just every single play, whether it be a run or – the few, maybe two or three passes you see. If you're not doing everything the right way, you're going to get stung. And that's something that we've heard you know, quite often so far in, in the days le- leading up to it from both Chris Kleiman and Scotty Hazleton that this is kind of a great game in terms of being a culmination of everything that they've built towards because you're not going to get away with one area not being very good as far as from a defensive standpoint. Everyone, all 11, had to be doing their job. If not, you're going to get stung more often and it gets an offense of this style. To give you some more numbers to show perspective as you're listening to how little they throw it, a lot of people think K-State doesn't throw it a lot, and that's accurate. K-State doesn't throw it a lot. Skylar Thompson completed 171 passes this season. Malcolm Perry completed 49. So Skylar Thompson completed, you know, what's that, more than three times as many passes as Malcolm Perry did. On the flip side, Skylar Thompson averaged 13 yards of completion. That's a fine number. That's not bad. That's probably above average in the Big 12. Malcolm Perry averaged 23.3 yards per completion. So, again, I'm, I'm repetitive. They don't complete it very often. They don't throw it very often. But so far this year when they have, it's been for big plays. Yeah, and we also had the luxury of seeing them play a full game because they played Army right. on a day no one else played. And it wasn't exactly like it. I know it's not a – it's a, but it's like a complete variation and not to the T. But there were some parts of their offense that kind of looked like – the QB power that Bill Snyder ran at Kansas State. They weren't just, you know, a triple option, run outside. It's either the pitch man, the dive, or the QB run. There was a little bit of variation to that to where it was just designed QB run from with Malcolm Perry just because he's so potent. So this won't look like it always won't look like a typical flex bone triple option offense like you said. They've kind of uh, grew that playbook a little bit, and I think they've been able to do that just because of how good of an athlete that Malcolm Perry is. Very, very well said. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Looks at like K-State's rush offense versus Navy's rush defense. Here are the numbers again. Navy PFF grades, rush defense, 74.8. Tackling for Navy, a 69.3. For K-State, rushing offense, 76.1. Run blocking, 70.6. Just total yardage, kind of traditional stats. Navy only gives up 110.8 yards per game on the ground. That's 17th in the nation. K-State itself averages 189.0 yards per game. That's 38th in the nation um a noteworthy stat too to keep adding to what navy does against the run they're pretty good statistically at least they only give up 3.2 yards a carry k-state gives up 4.44 if you're comparing those things so navy's been better um and then you look at games uh, against teams like navy excuse me against notre dame memphis two games they lost but neither team had success running the ball against navy will k-state dy have success running the ball against navy that'll be a little bit of the concern because one would think yeah, Kansas State probably a bigger offensive line than they have in their front seven so that you can really get rolling downhill and probably get some momentum and just gash them. But, you know, teams that you would suspect have that advantage in terms of size and athleticism on the front didn't have that advantage that you would be accustomed to seeing, especially Notre Dame. They, I think they did most of their damage, you know, throwing the ball, Correct. of course, with Ian Book. But So that is a concern because Kansas State this year – Everyone knows their bread and butter is running the ball. When they've ran the ball well, they've won games. When they haven't, uh, they well, they've they've lost. So right. That's the trend this year. They could throw for 300 yards. It really doesn't Kansas State no good if they do that, just because that's not what they hang their hat on, um, and it, it doesn't really you know move the needle for the Wildcat offense. That's what they got to do. Uh, to be honest, I don't know if they're going to be. I, yeah. mean, I don't. It's going to be do because Kent Navy does well against it, and Kansas State's been up and down in that element of their offense all year. I know it may sound like we're you know talking up Navy, the opponent a lot. We'll give our predictions later. Uh, we, they're they, good. They're they're good. That's the thing. They're a good football team. So if you're somebody who wants to just dismiss, now K State may win in a blowout. Who knows? We'll talk about that. And we'll find out. You know when the game actually gets played. But if you want to dismiss this as a you know service academy overachievers, they're not that good. Whatever you're making a mistake. You know they're ten and two for a reason. Look at their two losses again. The Memphis loss played in the Liberty Bowl at Memphis, a team that just you know played in the Cotton Bowl against you know Penn State. They led at halftime in that game. The things they want to do, they carried for 291 yards on 66 carries against Memphis in the Liberty Bowl, only allowed 105 yards on 21 carries on the ground against Notre Dame. Who hammered them? Let's be fair. You know 52 to 20. 
Same thing. Notre Dame tried to run it 31 times in that game, got 105 yards. That's 3.5 yards a carry. Navy on the flip, on the flip side ran 64 for 281, 4.4 carry. So against the two teams they still lost to, they had no problem running the ball and no problem stopping the run. Yeah, and that's a concern if you're Kansas State. It's something that you, you want to address and shore up. And I hope that doesn't happen to you, of course. And, and maybe, you know, tipping the scales is that they had three weeks to prepare. If you're a Kansas State fan, you certainly hope so. Absolutely. Let's look at the last part where people will assume, and it may be right, where K-State may have to find some big plays, perhaps is in the passing game. Navy PFF grades. Pass rush only a 66.1 cover to 63.5. Not particularly strong in either. K-State's grades passing. That's Skyler Thompson actually throwing it. 80.8. That's a nice number. Receiving 72.4. Pass block 81.6. The traditional stats, Navy gives up 215 yards a game. That's 51st in the country. K-State only 185, averaging 106. So traditional stats don't show a big edge for K-State. The PFF stats do say when K-State throws the ball, they should have success against this team. Yeah, and and obviously you want to take advantage of that when you when you have, you know, an advantage over the other team in a particular category. You want to exploit that, and I'm sure Kansas State will, but I'm sure it'll be timely too. It's just yeah. the third throwing game is going to be important uh, to move the ball, but it's still not what they typically want to do, and I don't think they're going to get away from what their DNA is on an offensive standpoint, so they're going to have to be able to run the ball. Navy's pretty good against the run, but we you just said there, Navy's not really good at getting after the passer, right. so that leads me to think, if they're going to be a good running game today, it's going to come from Skylar Thompson. One thing I just remembered, uh, I think it was Courtney Messingham who told us two days ago, they will stack the box against the running game. He said part of the reason it's hard to run against them is because they will not have four guys Sell in the line, they'll have five or six. That can happen. It's interesting, too, because that'll probably happen on called pass plays as well. They'll have guys who don't have scrimmage, but they haven't had a lot of success getting to the quarterback. So that is kind of just an interesting random thought that popped in the old, the old noggin here. An area where there's a pretty clear advantage for K-State is special teams. I'm going to give you some stats here. PFF grades, all they have is an overall grade, 70.8 for Navy and special teams. Not terrible. Um, 83.8 for K-State, so significantly better. Navy is 10 of 14 on field goal tries this year. Of course, K-State's been better than that uh, with Blake Lynch. They averaged 43 yards a punt. K-State's a little bit better than that. I think 45 to Devin Anktel. They averaged 16.9 yards, yards a kick return. That's for Navy. K-State's up in the high 20s. K-State's better on special teams. Navy doesn't have a single return touchdown. K-State has four. K-State averages 30 yards a kick return, again, compared to the 16.9. So everything I'm telling you, Navy's not trash on special teams. This isn't a bad special teams unit, but they're not particularly good in K-State's been borderline elite, at least the last you know month of the season. Yeah, the last eight games, really. The, yeah. the only poor month they had was the first one in terms of special teams. Outside of that, probably elite is the way to describe this unit. Maybe aside from Devin Ankel having a couple rough games, but otherwise he's been excellent. So Kansas State, a clear advantage over Navy when it comes to special teams. And that'll probably bear out the most, in my opinion, probably with field position, which will probably mm -hmm. be an important aspect of this game with two teams that really want to do the same thing. Derek, I've written down five questions I'm going to ask you that we've gone through those things and I haven't prepared you for these. I could have, I could have given this piece of paper hours ago. Didn't well, do it. Cause yeah. what's the fun in that? That's a surprise to me. Yeah. So <laughs> number one, I mean, I think you're going to feel a little on the spot here. Go for uh, it. How much does this game matter? I think that it matters a lot to Kansas State because it's more of a perception thing. Yeah. And, and you're still fighting perceptions with a new head coach that's never coached at the FBS level. And he's, you know, defeated a lot of the skepticisms that they rode into this year with. Winning a bowl game would probably be the icing on the cake. I don't think a loss is catastrophic, but I think a win is significant. That's a hell of a good answer. So number two, this is a total guess for you, probably. Which program is happier to be here? Which program is happier to be here? I think that at one point I felt like it was probably Navy because Kansas State clearly anticipated and had wishes of right. being in a better bowl game. But in terms of just being in a bowl game, I think Kansas State's pretty thrilled about it. So that scale might have tipped the other way when Kansas State finally came to grits with, hey, we're in the Liberty Bowl, but hey, we still made a bowl game and no one thought we were would be here. And Chris Kleiman actually said that yeah. on Monday in his press conference. He's never talked about the expectations or people having the wrong expectations mm -hmm. for them, but he said everyone in the country didn't think we'd make a bowl game except the people in our own locker room. So I think they want to be here. Again, very well said. That, that's such a big question. Of course, you know better than yep. me because that determines 80% of the bowl winners. Who Absolutely. wants to be there more? And I get the sense, too. I think both neither team feels like one that got incredibly slighted. K-State, sure, could argue, but the bowl game is so meaningful for yep. them. Navy's thrilled with what they've done. I don't get the sense that either team comes in here down about being here. No, in, in general, because of what you said, after adjusting to the, the perceived slide of the bowl pick, I don't think it's an issue for the team. The fans more than the team, I guess what I'm trying yeah. to say. I don't think anyone has an edge because they care more. I think both are excited to be here. 
Where do you think Navy would rank in just general quality amongst the teams K-State played this year? I mean, I know that's, again, so you're thinking about the Oklahomas, the Baylors, Texas, Oklahoma State, etc. Roughly, where do you think this Navy team would fall in just quality of opponents K-State's played this year? Uh, probably around the the West Virginia, Texas Tech side, probably yeah. a little bit better than that, I would say. Now, you lost to West Virginia. Right. But, Tech but, was very close. Uh, yeah. Tech was very close. And I think they're probably a little bit better than that because if you ask me who I think would win on a neutral field between Navy and those two programs, I would take Navy. Yeah. So I would say I would have Navy you know, favored over Texas Tech, West Virginia, and KU at least right. um, outside of that. Then, of course, Nichols, Bowling, so that's at least five teams. Yeah. So right around the middle-ish, you know? Yeah, right right around the middle-ish. And, and obviously against teams where Kansas State had close games with otherwise. Yeah. These last two I have for you before we get to the predictions and bring in Logan and Flando and all those guys as we continue on the KSO show recorded from the Comfort Suites, which are very nice. They're doing some construction here, but it's still very nice. In South Haven, Mississippi, if blank happens, K-State will win this game. Don't say score more points. <laughs> If if fill in the blank happens, K State will defeat Navy. If they run for at least two hundred and twenty five yards, that sounds about like the number that they need to hit. At least in terms of offense, defensively, going to be hard to do. But I would say, you know, get three three and outs, and I feel great about it too. I think three and outs are important in this game because Navy wants to possess the ball, Kansas State wants to possess the ball. The defense that can probably get the most probably wins. If blank happens, Navy is going to win this game. It, the answers are probably similar. I know. Yeah, because yeah. I think even though they run different styles of offense and defense, both these teams' DNA is about the same. I'm going to get predictions now. Let's just keep you first. No, yeah. let's have you come on last. So let's get Flanders to join the show for a second. I'll talk through Flanders' predictions, and I just want to ask you a couple questions. For oh, you. Uh, man. How are you doing? I'm great. Okay, that's I'm good. I'm great. You know, laying um, in this bed feeling good. What's the Liberty Bowl experience been like for you so far? Um, it's been fun. Better than well, DYs? Probably. Yeah. yeah. You know, you know, we had some fun that first night, but yeah, he, he saw Ohio State lose yeah. and then you know, had a rough sent him down a rough a Ru rough deal. Rough deal. But been a fun time. Memphis is an awesome town, you know, so that's been really exciting. And DY, I'm not, I know people who aren't here gave a bit of a like a sideways eye glance when you said Memphis is an awesome town. I love it. I don't know. I feel like Beale Street. Fun, I think it's fine. It's heck, fun as heck for where it's downs, at. You know? For where it's at, I think Memphis is is really cool. Like, no, it's not Orlando. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Or yeah, sure. no, it's not San Antonio or these places. But Memphis, to me, I, I haven't been to those places either, so I can, can't really speak on it. But this is going good. Memphis is cool. I think I I I'm, I, have, I give you a lot of guff, but I think it's cool too. I see it both ways. I think the Beale Street stuff's cool. I like that downtown area. I've, we've been to some nice areas too, but I, it, it's not the greatest place in the no. world. It's not the worst place in the world. You know, it's okay. Yeah, that's how, that's how Steve Brule would say it. I feel like yeah. um, Flanders. You've been uh, you got here in time to see all the stuff on Sunday. So you saw Hazelton. You saw the NBA stuff. You were at the presser today. What's your gut? I'm not asking. This is not full on prediction yet. But what's your gut right now? Start to lead me into your prediction. What do you What do you think is going to happen since being around the last few days here in Memphis? It's it's tough. I think both teams are prepared. Both mm -hmm. teams are coming into this, and because of that, I think it's going to be a very competitive game, and a fun one to watch. Um, but my gut doesn't doesn't feel good for K State yeah. just because I just the tackling issue that K-State has had all year against a team that rushes the ball so well. Getting good leverage against this this, this uh, option game. Yes, it just yeah. it scares me quite a bit. So, I mean, while, while I think it's not going to be a blowout either way, I think whatever the score is, I think it's a close game. But I, I my gut doesn't feel great for K-State so right now. So, clearly, clearly you are pulling for Navy in this uh, game. Yeah. Like, you <laughs> are a midi, a midshipman all the way. <laughs> all the way. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> Logan off mic just says, you're about to enlist. Like, that was a really good quote. <laughs> I mean, Logan has said a few things today on mic, off, oh, all off mic so far off that have been cuff. very good. But Flanders loves Navy so much, they're about, he's about to enlist. So we know who you're picking. <laughs> Tell me how much, the, how much the middies are winning by. Okay. And how many yards is um, Malcolm Perry going to run for? Ooh. Okay. Those yeah. are the two questions. And then tell me what's going to happen in the game. You can say, oh, it's going to be, you know, just, just tell, me what's gonna, tell me everything that's going to happen. I think, I think it's, like I said, it's going to be a competitive game, um, but also a slow one because I think, like DY said, possessions are going to be long. And Take that state hoodie off, too, while you're at it with all your, <laughs> with all your stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Logan's allowed to wear his state hoodie. You can take yours off. It's going to be that 
that long drawn out game. But I, I think what it comes down to is is Malcolm Perry running running down K State's throats and four. I'll 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 say. 300 yards. Ooh, yeah. Orlando is just bringing it all out. Yep. There it is. Yeah. Like 300 yards. And I still think this will not be all uh, hot takes exposed ever. <laughs> cold take. You're doing good. Malcolm Berry, 300 yards. 300 yards. Uh -huh. And I think that they get the win 27 to 24 and still a close game. K State still he does some stuff offensively to stay in it. But that's what I'm saying. Hey, I'm not. I'm looking at you crazy. I mean, he ran for 300 against Army. You know, I mean, it's not impossible. It'd be like the greatest bowl performance ever, probably. <laughs> you know, what I mean, but hey, you heard it first. Flando likes the middies. He like. I think he's gonna have a big game too. I don't know if he's gonna run for 300. You know, but he might. <laughs> you know, we're gonna find out. Why don't you pass that microphone to Logan and let him let oh, him on the team? Icy. Yeah, hot mic. Now, uh, Logan, uh, you have not been looking. I don't think at like you know forms or whatever at joining the Naval Academy. Um, but no. how has your time in Memphis been? Always been great. I mean, doing stuff that I may never get to do again, like well, go to a Grizzlies sad. game. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. And walk on the floor and, you know, take pictures of uh, K-State players shooting basketballs around and uh, climbing, holding the jersey. That was pretty cool. Were you nervous for Skyler when he got off to the ice cold? Now, I, listen, I'll back up. My wife, Nats, was watching it. She was kind of critical. Like, look at all the shots he's missing. I said, Nats, he's in an NBA arena from the NBA 3, right? Yeah. Like, in front of all these thousands of fans, he's drawing iron every time. That's not so bad. But he didn't make one till late. Were you worried for him? Did you think he was ever going to get one to fall? Yeah, I was worried for him because he's. they were playing against a Navy squad that – one kid had a broken arm, so I was huh. like, you can't lose to it. <laughs> Why did Navy put the one in with a, man, so many options? Why'd they put, you know? Case, I don't yeah. know, but uh, yeah, I guess he made one and they made zero, so that's good enough to win. Man, in hindsight, too, now I'm thinking about it, K-State may have been, had a great opportunity to throw, like, Justin Hughes and Mike McCoy out there, you know, give those guys a little. But, hey, I'm yeah. not going to criticize. I will say, Wyatt Hubert, I mean, did his job, though, in that, right? I mean, I know it's a simple part, but he stayed in the basket. No ball got too far away. Put a lot of layups back in. I mean, that's good yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think the game was he made the layup, and then he had to pass the ball out to Skyler for the three. Well, he did a good job. Yeah, he did a good job. Um... Well, you haven't given us as strong of a lean either way yet. But, again, you've been around. Flanders fancy. He flew in. You drove down with us, so you saw Courtney Messingham speak a few days ago, then, of course, Hazleton, then climate today. You've been here kind of through all of it. You've been around, you know, the Navy peeps, too. Tell me what you kind of feel is going to happen, and then I'll then I'll full-on make you give me a prediction, and I'll make you tell me what's going to happen. I feel like the players and coaches have been pretty relaxed. Yeah. I think the whole months of prep, pre pre you know. Uh, I know what you're saying. Prep. Prep, Yeah. Um, have been good for them. I think Kleiman really hasn't done this before, so yeah. it's new for him to have this prep of, you know, a month or two to worry about a team. I think that's really helpful for him because yep. he used to be in a playoff where he gets, you know, a week, a week yeah. to play, you know, a really good FCS team. And he talked about how he's played a, a team before that's had the option. The I think that's the FCS. Georgia Southern yeah. in a big playoff game with Jared So he's Cannon seen it before. It's nothing yeah. new. So, I mean, I agree. I mean, we saw guys on scooters today, you know, and this is Monday right. yesterday. Not in a – not in a – what's the word I'm looking for? I mean, not in what I would consider to be a, a haphazard way. But, yeah, I think they have been loose. And I think they have I, – I know they've had fun. I mean, for a yeah. fact. I think they've had a good time, and that's okay. You know, they should. So, you got Flando picking Navy 27-24. Malcolm Perry setting the NCAA record for yardage in a game, <laughs> I believe. You know, breaking Ladanian. Uh, who is it now? Is it – uh? Who has the all-time – because it changed like twice in like one year. Somebody got it against KU. It was uh, Samaje Pirine or something like that. I don't know who has it anymore. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Because Melvin Gordon had it for like two seconds and Samaje Pirine did it like one minute later. So either way, I want to score and kind of walk me through how you see this game playing out, much like Flando did. Well, I think it's it's dangerous. I mean, Navy's offense is dangerous. They played a bowl game last year and put up 450 yards of offense, and I think um, – Perry had 150 rushing yards out of that to beat Virginia. And that wasn't prime Perry. So yeah. yeah. So I mean, it is as it is a dangerous offense. I don't think the option is the dangerous part. I think it's Malcolm Perry getting into space. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have to set the edge. You're gonna have to have to have good games from Reggie Walker and Wyatt Hubert setting the edge. Make Malcolm Perry run between the tackles. I think dominating the line of scrimmage is gonna be huge in this game. Uh, so. I mean, it just. I think this game relies on K State's defense. I think their offense, you know, is good enough to march down the field yeah. on this Navy defense. But I'm looking at it as a K State win a 31 24. 
Yeah. Uh, K State pulls it out. So we got thirty one twenty four K State. We have twenty seven twenty four Navy. So we're right in the same the same same range. You're up. I'll, yeah, I want to go next. Uh, this is – I'm terrible at picking K-State games. So, like, first of all, don't don't even care what I pick here. You, you better know? hope he picks a loss. Right. I mean, like, listen. I mean, here's the thing. On Powercat game day, I may have been the hottest picker in the world for national – I think I, I went 5-1 and one against the spread like six weeks in a row. I can't pick a K-State game to, to win your to, – to save the life. As I'm put on the spot here, I want to pick Navy because I'd rather K-State won the game. And me picking Navy would probably lend – help to that but i wrote down that k-state was gonna be my pick for the story i wrote tomorrow i'm not gonna go back and edit that i like k-state 24 20 uh i like that k-state has a little more versatility you know i think a little more to me different ways they can win this game navy has one you know it's malcolm perry whoever their offense just like they've won every game this year they can only win that way they're not going to win if they get down two scores and have to throw a little bit k-state would not like to be in that scenario but in theory they could win that game so with that said, I like I think Case has more ways to win, including special teams. I'll take K State twenty four twenty, which means Navy will absolutely win and get their eleventh win in the Liberty Bowl. DY uh, wrap us up with a good prediction. I think Logan's was good. I'll uh, probably, a good I'll, prediction, and we'll we'll call this thing a show. I'll probably surprise many with this. I think, truthfully, when it comes down to me, I think both teams want to be here. Both teams are very motivated, but I think this game means more to Kansas State than it does to Navy. For that reason alone, and it's not a good reason, but for that reason alone, I think Kansas State wins. Also, kind of just thinking about it as you guys were talking, I think the shocking part of this game will be that Kansas State's offense dominates. I have, yeah. a, I have a feeling that Courtney Messigan is going to dial up a great game plan, and they're going to move the ball at will against Navy, and the middies won't have an answer, uh, whether it be running the ball or throwing the ball. I think Kansas State's going to win this game. 37-17. I really think they go out on a high hey, note, and Courtney Messingham is the, the bull game hero. We're going to have one of you guys that we can just rail on on Tuesday. It's going to be either D.Y. who picked K-State 37-17 or Flando who picked Navy and Perry running for 300 yards. So somebody we're going to come back. <laughs> and, and, yeah, Logan and me are just right. We're like, oh, we picked close games. You can't really come at us either way. We didn't say anything crazy. I'm not going to say I think that's going to happen, but I can see that scenario because you could argue getting a 10th win against Army was a pretty big deal for Navy, and it was. They've had less time you know, to prep for this than K-State has. That's a thing we haven't even really talked about because they had to prep for Army after finding out their bowl game while K-State was prepping for Navy or at least had the chance to look at them the whole time. So, yeah, I, I'm not saying I agree with that, but I can absolutely see a scenario where if we are, get back on this show tomorrow or to Wednesday and we say it happened, we say, well, of course it happened. You know, I mean, K-State had longer to prep. K-State cared more because DUI told us that. I hope that because I, I, I'd rather be right. <laughs> yeah, I think this is one you would rather be right on for sure. I think even Flanders would let you be right on this yeah. one. I really appreciate the work from you guys down here. This isn't it. I mean, this is the game's tomorrow. We're re releasing this Monday night. Maybe you're hearing it Tuesday morning. We'll be with Power at Powercat Game Day with John Kurtz and Mason Voth and Mitch Fortner from Cayman. We'll all be there. We'll be at Silky O'Sullivan's down on Beale Street. Uh, it's on Beale Street, right? Yeah, you guys yes. were there. Um, do you remember being there? Yeah, that's the one I remember. Good, good. We were, we'll be there, I believe, uh, tomorrow at like 1045, I want to say, a.m. is when that will be on. So we'll be around there. Tons of game coverage. Of course, we'll have more coverage after the game as well here from Memphis. So I really appreciate uh, the time and effort from Logan Mance and Grant Flanders and Derek Young fighting through all the things he's fought through in the last you know 36 or so hours. Also, of course, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance for their constant support of us. Uh, I drove by. I saw. I'm not just saying this like to be like a corny like salesman, but I keep noticing the PSB. Um, I almost said vending machines, ATM machines in Manhattan. I think they have six of them, and uh, it's nice not to pay fees. Okay. Use them. Yeah, use them. I mean, you could use them if you're somebody else's. You have to pay a fee. I guess you give them a couple bucks. Say thanks, thanks PSB for supporting KSO. That's a good way to say thanks to them. So I don't have anything else to say. We usually wrap it up with the whole group hollering in the room. Turn your face.